All right, so we're going to talk about solving basic log equations, and this is going to correspond with page 6 in your packet. So if you don't have your packet out, just make sure you do that now and flip to page 6. Okay, now in order to solve a log equation, the first thing that we're going to want to do is we're going to want to take that equation and change it into what we call exponential form. Okay, so this right here is considered logarithmic form. And this over here is considered exponential form. All right, now, in order to do that, we have this little phrase we say, circle the base, run the race. What that means is, if we were to take our base in the log equation, which is right here, and circle it, and when we say run the race, we say cross the finish line, right? Take it and move it to the other side of the equal sign. What's going to happen is, this word log is going to drop off, okay, and then this base is going to become the base on the other side of the equation. So what that would leave us with is C equals, remember this base is moving, B to the A power, okay, because this would become the base on this side of the equation. And that's what this says over here. C equals B to the A power. So again, circle the base and run the race. Make it the base on the other side of the equation. Okay, so Let's take a look at number one. So right now, number one is in log form. Okay, we want to get it out of logarithmic form and into exponential form. All right, so in order to do that, let's circle the base and run the race. So the word log drops off, so we could just bring down this radical five, and then the x becomes the base on the other side of the equation. So because it's the base, this one-fourth becomes our exponent. And now from here, all we have to do is solve. Now, you have to think back to the last unit when we were working with exponents. In order to get rid of a fractional exponent like this, what we want to do is we want to raise both sides of the equation to the reciprocal power. So the reciprocal of 1 fourth is just 4 over 1. So I'm going to raise both sides to the 4 over 1 power. Or if you want, 4 over 1 is the same thing as just 4. So if you want to just take this, and raise it to the fourth power, you could totally do that. All right, so these will cancel off, leaving us with x. And then radical 5 to the fourth, well, I mean, you could do that in a calculator if you want, but if you think about it, isn't radical 5 squared just 5? And since we're raising it to the fourth, isn't that like squaring it again? So if you take that 5 and square it again, it gives you 25. If you want to double check, you could just plug radical 5 to the 4th in your calculator. All right, so let's take a look at number 3. Now, number 3, so we're skipping 2, okay? I'm just kind of jumping on to number 3. I'm going to do some of the odds with you, I think. Um, so number 3, again, it starts off in log form. So we're going to get it in exponential form. So in order to do that, we circle the base and we run the race. So the word log drops off. I can bring this x down. And this 3 now becomes the base on my other side of the equation. So it gives me 3, and then the negative 2 is going to become the power, 3 to the negative 2. All right, um, I mean, if you want, you could do that in your calculator, 3 to the negative 2. But let's practice with negative exponents. We know if we have a negative exponent, if we were to make this into a fraction, we make an exponent positive by moving that term to the other side of the fraction bar. So since 3 to the negative 2 is in the numerator, if we move it down to the denominator, it becomes 3 to the positive 2. And we could put that placeholder of a 1 on top. And since 3 squared is 9, that leaves me with 1 over 9. All right, so let's continue on with the odds. So let's take a look at number 5. Now again, number 5 is in log form, so the first thing we're going to do is circle the base and run the race to put it into exponential form. So when we do, the base is no longer holding up that word log, uh, so we just drop down the 125. The x becomes the base on the other side of the equation, so that means that the negative 3 halves would have to be our exponent. All right, so this one we're going to solve. I mean, even though we have a negative exponent, you know, I wouldn't even bother writing that as 1 over x to the positive 3 halves power because we're going to go about solving this one the same way we did number 1. If you want to get rid of an exponent, what you can do is you can raise both sides of the equation 
to the reciprocal power. So the reciprocal of negative 3 halves is negative 2 thirds. Now, one thing I want to mention, only because I saw some people in class doing this, please don't ever put your exponent on the top left. That's not where an exponent goes. Okay, negative 2 thirds does not go, if it's a power, it does not go on the top left. All right, so make sure if you have an exponent, you put it on the top right like that. Okay, so these are going to cancel, and I'm going to be wind up with x on the right-hand side of the equation. Now, I mean, technically, if you wanted to, you could just plug 125 to the negative two-thirds in your calculator, but I'm going to practice with the, um, you know, negative exponents and ra fractional exponents. All right, so if we have a negative exponent, we could first make it positive by moving it to the other side of the fraction bar. All right, so I'm going to take the 125 and raise it to the positive two-thirds by moving it into the numerator of the fraction. And then I have a placeholder of a one here. All right, that does say two-thirds. It's kind of hard to read my sloppy handwriting. But anyway, um, we know when we have a fractional exponent, it goes power over, sorry, power over root. All right, so we know that the numerator here tells us the power, and we know that the denominator here tells us the root. So I'm going to set up a radical and we're going to have the cubed root, right, that 3 gives us the root of 125 to the second power. So I'm going to raise that to the second. All right, so let's keep going. Well, the cubed root of 125 is 5. And then 5 to the second power is 25. So we're left with 1 over 25. All right, and the last one we're going to take a look at together is number seven, because then I really want you to try the rest of these um, on your own in class tomorrow. All right, so again, let's circle the base and run the race. So that leaves us with 17x minus 4 equals x plus 4 squared. Okay, so remember when something's squared, it means there's two of them. If you have a binomial in the parentheses, don't try to take this two and distribute it inside the parentheses. You can only do that when you have a monomial being raised to a power. Binomial means that you have two terms separated by an addition or subtraction. So you can't distribute it into a binomial. All right, so let's bring down our 17x minus 4. And when something's squared, it means there's two of them. So let's take it and write it out twice. All right, so... I'm just going to keep bringing down the 17x minus 4, and let's just double distribute all this out. So we'll have x squared plus 4x plus another 4x plus 16. And then if you want to combine your like terms, you can, but we know that when we have an x squared, we're going to have to get everything to one side of the equation. So I'm going to move over the 17x and the minus 4. I'm going to subtract 17x from both sides and add 4 to both sides, okay? And that way, when I do, I have 0 on the left-hand side of the equation. All right, so we have 0 equals x squared, and then 4x minus 17x. Oh, I'm sorry. 4x plus 4x minus 17x would be negative 9x. And then 16 plus 4 is 20. All right, so it looks like we're going to have to factor in t-charts. So this is, you know, really straightforward factoring. We have a 1 in front of our x squared. So we could set up two sets of parentheses. We can put an x in the first spot in each parenthesis. And the reason, again, we're allowed to do that is because our leading coefficient, the number in front of the x squared right here, is a 1. Okay, if it was anything other than a 1, we'd have to do factor by grouping. So we couldn't just set up our parentheses. All right, so anyway, let's come up with two numbers that add to negative 9 and multiply to positive 20. So negative 5 and negative 4. All right, and then we're going to make a t-chart, and here we get x equals 5 and x equals 4. Now, it's really important to make sure that when you take a look at your answers, and I really should have said this from the very beginning, from step 1, but you're never allowed to have log of a negative number or log of zero. 
So what you want to do is you want to take your answer. So here we have a 5. And if it creates a 0 as the base, or a negative as the base, or if it creates a 0 or a negative of what you're taking log of, it cre basically if it creates a 0 or a negative anywhere, you have to cross it off. You can't have log of 0, log of a negative. So let's take a look. If we take a 5 and plug it in here, 5 plus 4 is positive 9, so that's fine. All right, if we plug in a 5 here, 17 times 5 minus 4 is also positive. So that's fine as well. So what we can do is we can circle this. That's good. All right, now let's take a, take a look at the 4. If we take the 4 and substitute it in here, 4 plus 4 is a positive number. That's fine. You can use that. If we plug it in here, 17 times 4 Minus 4 is also positive, so that works. We could use it here. But if it did create, let's say instead of this being a positive 4, let's say that we wound up getting x equals negative 4. If we plugged in negative 4 plus 4, that would give us 0. If you create a 0 or a negative anywhere with the log, you would have to cross off that answer. 